Okay, so in this video, we will use differentials to approximate the change in revenue as sales increase from one value to another and also decrease from one value to another. But suppose we're given initially not the full demand function, but only two points on the demand function. And we will be assuming that we have a linear demand function. So suppose that the two points we're given are x equals 100. So when consumers are willing to purchase 100 units, say that the unit price happens to be $80. And when consumers are willing to purchase 200 units, let's say that the unit price is $20. So how do we find the equation of this line given the two points on it? Well, the first thing we need, of course, is the slope of the line. This is given by the change in P over the change in X. So we can take either point as the initial point and the other point as a terminal point. So let's take this as the terminal point. So the change in P is 20 minus 80 over the change in X, 200 minus 100. So what we then get is negative 60 over 100. In decimals, of course, negative 0.6. So we have the slope of this line. So P must be equal to negative 0.6 times x plus a constant b. And now to find a constant b, well, we can use either point because each point is a point on the line, therefore must solve the equation of the line. So let's use the point 180. So let's replace. So then the price is 80, so we get 80 is equal to negative 0.6 times x, which is 100, plus b. So this is nothing but negative 60 plus b. To isolate for b, add 60 on both sides. Therefore, b is 80 plus 60, which is 140. So, the demand function, p as a function of x, is equal to negative 0.6x plus b, which is 140. But if you recall, we said initially that we we're interested in the change in revenue. Well, how do we obtain from the demand function the relationship between the unit price and the quantities demanded by consumers to the revenue? Well, this is quite simple. How do you obtain the revenue of selling a given product? Well, it is, of course, the number of units sold times the price of one unit. So the revenue is just number of units sold times the unit price. If we replace P by its function of X, so X times this will give us negative 0.6X squared plus 140X. And now we have the revenue function as a function of X. Okay, so we'll look now at two problems. So this will be the change in the revenue function. First, as X, the number of units sold, increases from 100 to 104. And then we'll look at the same kind of question, but as the number of units sold decreases from 90 to 88 units. The one thing we'll calculate right now, and we'll see 
when we look at the differential is we need the derivative of the revenue function dr with respect to x dx. If you differentiate this with the power rule, in both cases you will get here negative 1.2x plus the derivative of 140x is simply 140. So now we have our revenue function as a function of units sold and the marginal revenue, the derivative of the revenue function as a function of x. What's nice is we have a very simple revenue function as it is nothing but a inverted quadratic polynomial. So it simply is a parabola facing downwards. So let's produce a rough sketch of our revenue function. And if you factor x, then one clear zero of this quadratic is zero. And by solving for the other zero, you will find that it is located exactly at 233.3 periodic. So this is a rough sketch of our revenue function. A parabola facing downwards. Now as we've said, let's suppose that the number of units sold, x, increases from 100 to 104. I will circle 100 to emphasize it is the initial value of x and then it increases to 104. So let's look at the graph for the corresponding values of the revenue function. So here, there's a value of r at 100, so it's r of 100. And here we have the corresponding r value, but now at 104. So let us first find the exact change in the revenue function, as x, the number of units sold, increases from 100 to 104. Well, the exact change, if you recall, we denote by delta r. And this is always the final value of r, so the value at 104, so r of 104, minus the initial value, r of 100. So now it's a direct substitution. Plug in here instead of x 104 and you will have the revenue when x is 104 minus the value of r when x is replaced by 100. I will leave the calculation up to you and you will arrive at 70.4. And so you see when the number of units sold increases from 100 to 104 the change in revenue is positive, so revenue increases from here to here, and it increases by exactly $70.4 dollars. So now we have the exact change in revenue. Let's now use differentials to approximate this change in revenue. The differential of course is dr, and this is always the slope of the function, so dr over dx, and we always evaluate the slope, the derivative, at the initial value of x. So this will be the slope when x is 100 times, and this is where it's very intuitive because if you think about this, to get dr back from dr over dx, you have to cancel dx, so you have to multiply by dx. Well, two steps. First, we have here the derivative of r with respect to x for any x. So replacing here x by 100, and you will have the derivative with respect to x at 100. 
you will find a value of one, uh, not 120, but simply 20 times dx. Now dx is the change in x. Well, x went from 100 to 104, and the change in x is always the final value minus the initial value. So in the end we have, well, 20 times 4, which gives us 80. So you see, not quite the same value, but also not that far either. So, to summarize, as sales increase from 100 to 104 units, the revenue increases by exactly $70.4. And if we want an approximation to the increase in revenue using differentials, we get an approximate increase in revenue of $80. Let's now look at a similar problem where now x will no longer increase but decrease. And we'll pick different values of x. I will reproduce the sketch of the revenue function but including different values. So let's say that sales decrease now from 90 units to 88 units. Again, I'm going to circle 90 to emphasize it is the initial value of x and 88 is the final value of x. So let's look at the corresponding values of the revenue. So this is the revenue at 90, so R at 90. And here's the revenue at 88, R of 88. So, let us first calculate the exact value of the change in revenue. And we can see here that we are going to have a negative change in revenue. Because as X goes from 90 to 88, R goes from this point down to this point. So we have here a negative change in revenue. As always, the change is obtained by the final value minus the initial one, so R of 88 minus R of 90. Recall that we have found the value of R for any X value, so replace x by 88 to find r of 88, replace x by 90 to find r of 90. I will leave the calculations up to you, and you should arrive at a, an exact change in revenue of negative 66.4 dollars. So, as sales decrease from 90 to 88 units, the revenue also decreases by exactly 66.4 dollars. Well, let us now use differentials to estimate the change in revenue. This is, as we've said before, simply dr, which can be found using the derivative, dr over dx, always at the initial value of x, which here is 90. And as we've said before, to recover dr from dr over dx, we have to multiply through by dx. Well, recall that we have found dr over dx as a function of x, negative 1.2x plus 140. If you replace in here x by 90, you should find a value of 32 times the change in x. Well, the change in x as always is the final value minus the initial one, so 88 minus 90. This is 32 times negative 2, which is, of course, negative 64. Which is not exactly negative 66.4, but again, 
fairly close. So to summarize, as in this case, the number of units sold decreased from 90 to 88, the revenue function decreases by $66.4 exactly, and we can approximate this value using differentials, which give us an approximate change in revenue of negative $64. And this idea of approximating an exact change with a differential is only good, of course, for a small enough change in the independent variable. You can sort of see it. The bigger the change, in this case x, the wider the gap between the exact and the approximate value. You see we have a change here of two units. The values are fairly close. For a change here of four units, the values here are close but a little further apart. So always keep in mind that you can always approximate a change by a differential as long as the change in the independent variable is small enough. If it's too big, you will have a rather poor approximation. And this is how you can use differentials to approximate the change in this example for a revenue function, but of course the idea works for any kind of function. And that's it.